it needs to continue to impact the, bat- the bottom line. And I think that that's how companies start to recognize it more. I think even now too, a lot of um, employees are a lot more vocal than they probably have been in the past. So I think that that also helps as well is because they're pushing companies to do more. A lot, if we kind of go back to a couple of months ago with the murder of George Floyd and and um, and other black people in the black community, when companies started making those statements to support Black Lives Matter, majority of them were the direct request of their employees. And and the re and it really shows people, I don't believe in cancel culture, you know, I, I believe in pushing for change. And and I think that because these companies were forced to do this, this is what we need to continue to do, right? And then those that have that push their companies to do this. Now, how are you holding them accountable afterwards? So that when someone like you comes in and they want to pitch in the back of their mind, they're remembering, Oh wait, we have these commitments. We have people that want us to be accountable. We need to think differently and, 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 and push in a different direction. So I think it's so important that we continue to utilize our voices in those type of spaces until companies really do different and they're being forced to do different. So we con- we need to continue to apply that pressure on them to do different. And I think that that's where we'll start to see the change a bit more. And, 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 and it wasn't because they what didn't want to do better. It's just, everyone just gets comfortable. You just ride in the wave. You just ride in it. It's still moving. I'm still a, pro- I'm still afloat. I'm still progressing. But, but you turn around and before you know it, another company has already done two circles around you because you didn't want to give this one marketing agency an opportunity. There you, you know? go. So yeah. That's how they learn, unfortunately. Yeah, the bottom line. It always yeah. comes down to the bottom line. It, question for you. You've been in the building now for two years or so. Uh, high level executive position. Do you find that you have been able to make real change? Mm -hmm. And I ask this because it's now becoming more common, especially for Fortune 500 companies, uh, you know, very profitable, very well-known organizations to bring in heads of diversity and inclusion. But can we feel safe from from being on the outside that this is just not a figurehead position, that they are actually taking what you have to say in the policies and the procedures that you're putting in place to ensure that everybody within the company, not just black and brown people, but people's religious beliefs, LGBTQ community, whatever it might be, that people are being treated fairly? Or is it just them checking a box? To say, look, hey, we have a black woman who yeah. runs, you know, the, the, the head of diversity and inclusion. We're doing our part. Yeah, no, I, I think that the difference here is it's up to the individual who was hired, appointed or whatever to make sure that they're not just a box that someone ticked. Right. So we need to demand more of ourselves and the organizations that we're in to make sure that the role that you're sitting in is not just one of tokenism. And then when you do feel like it is getting to that point, you pick up your stuff and you exit the building because we cannot allow ourselves to just be in a figurehead type of role. That's not what we wanted to do. That's not the purpose of the role because people, like you said, are literally counting on you internally and externally. And I remember in my very first day, when I tell you the bright eyes, like literally an excitement that people that look like me had. And like you said, not just black and brown people, but any other group that felt underrepresented. And to say, wow, there's hope. This is the future. We can push forward. With that type of perspective and people behind you and pushing you forward, you can't just be a, a box ticker. 
like you can't even allow yourself to be that. Like, like that's not what our ancestors wanted for us for to do. Right. They weren't just just doing just to do. We're here trying to make real change. Um, so so, you know, directly to your question, I think it all varies per organization. I think there's some organizations that have people that sit at um, head of diversity and inclusion roles that are doing amazing. And they have some that I don't see nothing. You know, and of course it could be because I'm not looking. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to, you know, make it seem like it's all them. But, you know, I think that the important thing is to make sure that um, you have a budget (laughs) to make sure that you are in those rooms that you're supposed to be in. If there's a meeting with a leadership team, you need to be part of that conversation and to make sure you really have the autonomy to make change happen. And, and then you push them for that change. But I think one thing that is really important is that power move of change does not live and die only with you. It's impossible. It cannot be one person. It cannot be one function. So as much as I am the lead of it, I am the lead, but there's still an army of 18, 20,000 people that need to do their part if we're ever going to see something. And it does start from the top bottom. So my job is really to advocate, to push, and to challenge those that are making these key decisions to make sure it doesn't feel performative, you know? And 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 that's really what the difference is. And and that type of autonomy, honestly, is really going to de- is really going to vary per individual. And it's going to vary per organization. I'm a very vocal, direct, candid leader. So my executive and my CEO already knows he's going to get the real deal. And he already knows that I am not just going to take a, oh, we'll do that next time. Oh, no. like That's not going to happen. Because like I said, there are thousands of people behind me waiting, embracing, and looking for that change. So I do feel like we've made impact. I think you mentioned before, you're not going to see everything overnight. Change doesn't happen overnight, right? So I, I do feel like there's impact being made. I do feel like there are processes that are being audited and being changed, um, partnerships that are existing that never existed before, and those opportunities are there. So we have to just keep chipping away and kill and building those 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 bricks, brick by brick by brick, until we truly get the foundation that we're looking for in order to be able to have sustainable change. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.